Good luck to you. Good luck. I will. I will. Coach, from a coaching perspective, Coach Saban ties Coach Bryant with six national titles. Can you kind of put a feeling behind that from a coaching perspective? It's really kind of amazing. It's kind of a, one of those wild moments. It really is because you no one ever thought you'd ever get there. And to do it in today's time and the way the game is and the scholarship limitations and what he's done, it's really an amazing deal. Really, is. He, He's done a heck of a job. That's why I wanted to come by and make sure I told him. I, the changes he made and give his kids a chance to win was amazing. You know Nick and you know the risk he took coming out of halftime. Uh, do you expect that? You know, it's great. I mean, it was a risk, but it wasn't a risk. I thought he had to do it to win the game. And that's that's the one thing about Nick. People think about him as a defensive guy and a conservative. He's not. It's whatever he has to do to win the game. He done it, he, and he did a great job. I've had a lot of those conversations at halftime with him. <laughs> people, people always kind of talk about how inflexible Nick is if they don't know him. But does that kind of give an example That's of that? about his polar opposite of what he really is like. Nick is a super guy, great personality, and he's very flexible. He's just you know, he's flexible for the right reason. And he has a lot of deep thought in what he does. Yeah, I mean, can you talk about his adaptability and how it's, you know, in He has a feel for the game and the momentum of things, and he understands the big picture of the game. He sees the thing in a, in, a, in a very wide view, and he's able to make those calls. He's not scared to make those calls. Coach, what's it? When you enter the SEC and you see a team of all freshmen with a national title, what's going through your mind as you're about to take over at a &M? Got some work and recruitment there. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll be there. Your thoughts on two? I mean, to be able to do that. It was amazing to win. And now the good thing is, there's not a lot of pressure. As crazy as that sounds, because there's not a lot. I mean, you're already behind. Yeah. But at the same time, to win and execute, and make the plays he did. But then he did it at the right time at the end of the game. The throws he made, and what he did. You know, he, it was that was an amazing deal. And, and kids today, it's amazing how quick they grow up. Was Nick always willing to play freshman? I mean, always. we always did. We always played a lot of freshmen. We were at LSU back in the day. I play a lot of freshmen and a lot of the same philosophies in which we have. And if they're ready, not, you have to in today's time with the scholarship limitations because if not the the injuries and the buildup all year, you, you have to develop those kids all year. Working yeah. with Nick as long as you did, is there something in your mind that separates him from other people? Yeah, I think his great attention to detail and his ability to hold you accountable, to hold players and coaches and everything accountable. And I think he does a great job of that. Coach, what was it that you saw in Texas A&M that maybe – that, that you see the potential? Well, I mean, you have tremendous you have tremendous resources. You have administration now from the president, chancellor, AD, and myself who see things as one. You have an unbelievable recruiting base, and they're willing, they're wanting to win and do the things you have to do to be successful. And I had a great relationship. Scott Woodward went to LSU when Nick and I did back in 2000. So we see things very similar, and you see that potential in that, in that state with, with players, and it's something that you couldn't walk away from. Yeah, that has been good There's the onside kick. Now we closer. did. Now we did back in the LSU no, days. <laughs> so, so I'm going back, and I'm like, all right, a couple years ago, the onside kick changed the game against Clemson. Can you tell me some more that you remember from back? Then? I remember we we made that switch the first year in the bowl. wasn't a championship game, but the, the first switch we made in a bowl game when we put Rohan Davy in for just for Josh Booty. We come back in the Georgia Tech game, he was MVP in the second half. Yeah. Uh, when we won the SEC championship 2001, now we lost Rohan who got hurt. And I switched things up at halftime with the quarterback runs, and we lost Tofield. We lost, we had to go lost our quarterback. We won the SEC championship against the Tennessee team in 01. Yeah. That was a phenomenal team. That win right there is one of my favorites of all time. And Nick did a great job. And then, you know, the way we played the national championship game, we changed there. We were more of a defensive team and created big plays on offense. So he, he has a great feel for his team and how he has to play it to win the game. Are you slack job like the rest of us? When that touchdown goes down, or as a coach, are you just thinking the analytics? I thought they was going to throw it on first down. I was thought they was going to the end zone on first down. That's what I was calling, but they did. It was a great read. And Nick, he, did, he did a great job looking the safety off. He held the safety on the hash and tied in down the vertical and, and held it, and the kid didn't get off. Jalen said he was surprised he threw. He saw the double high, and he said, he "Well, but the safety didn't come off the hash. He read the tight end down the middle. The safety stayed on the hash, and the corner let it go, and he got to able to get the ball." Across. I know four verts was, I guess, kind of the inspiration behind his pattern matching scheme. Is it kind of ironic that four well, verts? Four verts was part of the pattern matching, but also the layered ends. We layered the ends and all that. We used to do a lot of stuff that we, he, and we called wind and a lot of layered ends that he couldn't match in, in, in normal zones. He pattern matched all that stuff. But he, yeah. he always, he, uh, he's always done that. Jimbo, um, five national championships in the last eight years. What does that have to say about Nick and this program? And he's on the hill to And he's getting it done and he, he gets it. I mean, and he's in, you know, adaptability is great for coaches over time and he does that. Where's, a, where's Nick's place all time as a coach? I mean, I, I, I'm a person, I don't think you can judge him. I, I'm not a 
do you dominate your era? He's definitely dominated his era in this time. It's about time for him to retire. <laughs> <laughs> you and, uh, that? No, no. I'll, I'll, I'll look forward to competing against him. It's fun to do it because he does a great job. But, I mean, he's arguably, you, you put him in the, in the top as good as he's ever been.